guys, we are in paradise. Welcome to the untouched, rural, beautiful wild coast. This is an incredibly special adventure because you get to go horseback riding along this pristine wild coast. You get to see the most beautiful waterfalls, jump into these beautiful waterfalls, cliff jump, but most importantly, you get to immerse yourself in the local culture of the Pondo people and appreciate their simple way of living. Before we head out on our adventure, our local guide, Mr. Nlovu, gives us an orientation on the area and how our day is going to go. But stay tuned, because a bit later we have a world-renowned guest speaker who's going to tell us from a scientific view why this area and its biodiversity are so unique. Big companies or big cooperatives, they're looking forward to take hold this wild coast, more especially from Casino all the way to Mtentu. So they're planning to do um, open a big titanium um, mining here. So it's been going for a long time, more than 20 years now. So people in Kolobeni, on this area, we call it Nkungundlovu or Kolobeni. We live off the land. We happy the way that we live. And we plant the food and we, we live off the sea. So we actually rely on the sea and the land. So Minister Kwete Mantash has been visited us three times, looking forward to put this um, Australian mining company in our area. Then last visit, he was actually um, saying he's a black man, so he knows how to deal with ponders. But we showed him, yeah. we kicked him off. So there's a lot happening. Some of you might have some stories that's happening on the ground. So people actually living here day for tourism, for substance farming, for fishing. So the tourism that we want is eco-friendly tourism. So people by seeing you walking along the wild coast, they'll feel very happy and welcome you. Our first stop is the petrified forest along Mzamba Beach. Okay guys, so we're currently taking out Danville Girls um, to school on a three-day trek on the wild coast. And this is our first stop. It's called the petrified forest. As you can see, this looks like a log. You might be asking yourself, what's the significance behind this big log? Well, actually, this is 80 million years old and it predates the dinosaur age. So back in the day, the ocean wasn't here. It was actually a forest. So this is the remains of the forest from million and millions of years ago. The Mzamba Caves house some cool fossilized seashells and turtle shells. You'll see them when you come on the tour. Stumbled upon a primitive human living in a cave, our first cave human. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at our first major lunch break, just before the end of the trek for day one. So day one is a 10 kilometer trek, and then just before that mountain, we will jump onto our horses and continue with a 15 kilometer horse ride. So total distance, 25 kilometers for day one. Okay, so here we are with Danville Girls and we are about to continue the hike to our horses. First, our local horse guide, Styx, gives us a bit of an orientation on the horses. My approach when you come on the horse, I want to know we are the beginner, good rider, never been on the horse. We want to know all of you and then we'll try, we we'll try, but I will never know all these horses, but we'll try to give you the very slow one if you've never been in the horse before. And then, but I will try my best. See us everyone on the horses, with their helmets of course. Everyone riding the horses. <laughs> and we're like halfway there. So yeah, we're the first company to take a school on the wild coast with horses. Our team previously hosted 
um, biker house, but they didn't use horses. So um, on this trip, we obviously had to organize uh, horse helmets because the locals don't have horse helmets. So thanks to D. Sadly and Abdul Samad Bulbulia for the donation. An appeal as well, if you guys have any old hiking gear, um, if you want to give it away, you're more than welcome to give it to us and we shall supply it to our team who are often operate from impoverished areas. So if you want to give back, you can do so with some equipment and we can help uplift them. The very cool thing about the horseback riding on this trip is that you go through various terrains. The beach sand along the ocean, the coastal bush and lastly you end off in the local village. On our way to Mtn2. So we are now entering or we're in Mtn2 village. This is gonna be our home for the night. So we just got off our horses and now we are at home sweet home where we'll be spending the next two nights at the homestays with the locals. You can say hi Ma. Uh, <laughs> a local uh, horse guide. Yeah. Can you tell us more about your horses? My, my horses are very cool uh, listening. These are community horses. Once you come here as a guest, you're welcome. There is no crime here. You're very welcome. Everyone greeting you friendly because we're using the community horses. Each guest just keep coming here, just make one of the household to benefit and survive and then to get something to eat at, uh, at the end of the day. Oh, I see. That's so nice. So yeah, the community so benefits from the horses and, and the accommodation. Yeah, 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 I encourage people to come and live in the VPA because the, most of the people, as you see, there's too many ladies here. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's cooking for you. At the end of the day, they get something to feed their and, kids. And what does VBA mean? VPA is a village uh, basic accommodation. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, village, village basic accommodation. accommodation. And where did where did you learn how to train horses? So I learned from my latest father that uh, passed away. So when I was young, I was a jockey. Oh wow! Yeah, I was training horses. I was a jockey, and then I was do horsing. Um, growing up since I'm old now. So this is our accommodation for the night. But very, very neat. All our horses having a little break after all their hard work. But look at the view from our little Randavo. We're going to have a traditional meal tonight. It's frequently asked questions about the toilet. It's a long drop, but it's beautiful, it's neat, it's clean. There's a toilet. This is how people live in South Africa, and there's nothing wrong with it. Good morning from Mtentu. We are currently watching the sunrise for the ocean next to our beautiful village based accommodation while sipping some coffee. So, this trip is catered with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We woke up to the sounds of the chicken. So, today is day two, and today is going to be quite an adventurous day. We're going to explore many waterfalls, do some cliff jumping, and obviously more hiking. So good morning, we are about to have breakfast. This is where Sadia and I and the teacher slept and that room, that rondawal is where the students slept from Danville Girls. So this is the area where we do our eating. Here's our chef, you can say hello. Hello. <laughs> and let's see what she made. So she made local kosa bread, like steamed bread, she made that herself. Then we have some porridge. Then we have some eggs and we have some beans. So once again, it's all vegetarian as well as a lot of them says no meat. A lot of our clients are vegetarian or vegan. Um, and obviously tea and coffee and amazing views of the rural wild coast our 
local homestay. We just had our breakfast, now we prepare our own lunch, um, our own lunch bags. Mama brings all the ingredients and you can make it however you want to. So there's some, there's still some kosa bread, there's some buns, some boiled eggs, cheese. She even gives foil so you can wrap it and put it in your bag. Tomato, some chips, lettuce and some juice as well as some cucumbers. Um, so yeah, you know, if you're a vegetarian, we can cater. You can let us know your dietary requirements. For example, one girl didn't want tomatoes and mushrooms, so we didn't have that in our eggs. And we didn't have pork or beef as well, because um, one I don't know, doesn't eat uh, beef. So yeah, about to pack our lunches and head off for the day. You actually peel the white, uh -huh. then you put straight on your sole, wherever you cut. Then you kind of peel it nice and carefully, then you can put in your, then you just let it actually stop bleeding. Yes. Make, make it so dry, but only, nowhere else you can find it. Only two places in the whole world, Pondo tree. Yeah, Pondo palm tree. It actually got like a small um, coconut fruit, very small, you have to crush it and then it's like a coconut inside, it's eatable. So now at the M10 to Rivermouth and to cross over we need to take a local ferry and it's basically like a toll, he charges 20 rand per person with a return trip. Even if you go in one way, you will still have to pay the 20 rand. So, yeah. And if you look this side, here's the beach. I'm Tensi River on our ferry. There's Zama in front of us. Hello. Steering us the way. Look at the view down the gorge. Simi's on here. She's alive. She hasn't tipped over yet. Things are good. So they come and breathe here. No kingfish. one knows the reason why the kingfish travel all the way from Mozambique and Kozi Bay come in here. Just only here. So it's quite special for kingfish. Also when they swim, they actually swim right on above the water. You can see the fins and the tail also doing a cycle. So we're not sure why. Also Umtentu named after Umtambuna. Umtentu means our medicine. There's a whole history lesson behind how it got its name. You can join one of our tours in future and hear the whole history lesson behind it, which is incredible. So we're entering the Mkambati Nature Reserve. Um, Mkambati means place of lepers. And because there was a leper community, this area of land with its rich biodiversity was preserved. So we're on day two of our Mtentu excursion with Danville girls. Um, we just started our hike. Today's like a 15 kilometer looped hike. We crossed the river and the next stop will be a shipwreck. We'll see you when we're at the shipwreck. So we're now at the shipwreck. Check it out. Beautiful. Um, so the name of the shipwreck called Welmi 303. It was from South Korea to Lipa Colony. This was a fishing trawler. Guys, so we have a school with us down below. We also have a school of dolphins. Look straight ahead. You saw many whales, but yeah, there's the dolphins. You see a whale as well? Yeah. I think, yeah, there's one far out. But yeah, it's so cool, all the dolphins. Perfect time to be hiking. So we're at Incombati Falls. Hamza is about to do a pin drop. <laughs> Here's my wife. She's about to twin drop as well. Okay. She looks so happy. Two. So the teacher one. is going to go first. Two, one. Well done. 
on by the beach, we were by Mkambachi Falls. Now we are at Baboon Rock, it's like a small cave, having lunch and if you look straight ahead, that is Stranlupa Falls. And we're going to be jumping from uh, here into the water. Let's show you how deep it is. That's actually a 9 meter free fall, but completely safe. Three, two, whoa, there she goes. Nice. This is Noodle, a little moray eel that lives up here on the Mkambati River. So we just jumped from the Baboon Rock. It's about seven meters. Oh, what a beautiful eel. Just at a viewpoint. So basically on this river here, the Mkabati River, there's three waterfalls. The first one calls them Mtabati, the second one Stranlupa, which we just done where we did our uh, big jump with the caves at. And now we're gonna head to Horseshoe, which is the third one. Actually Zama. Yeah. Chopped and got a small injury and just below her knee. Now we're using a natural also, blaster. Pharmacies and medical resources are quite inaccessible for these communities, so traditional medicine is the way to go. And as we can see in this video, it works. This plant also works to help the wound to clot faster. So we're now at our third and last waterfall for the day and this is called Horseshoe Falls and we're going to do a loop so instead of walking back on the coast we're going to walk a bit inland with views on the, off the coast to our right. This is probably the biggest waterfall, the biggest swimming area. Now we're walking home like cows, back to our village on the inland route. So we're almost home, back at the Intento River mouth. Looks hectic, sounds hectic. We're gonna get a ferry across. Moonrise at Intento River. And the sun's going down just by Zama and Simi. Almost done with our hike, tonight's a full moon. Just walking back in after our river crossing and back our homestay via a beautiful sunset. There's our homestay in the distance. In those Rondawu. What's for dinner? We have pumpkin, some coleslaw, some salad, and some rice with. Um, what is this called again, Savia? It's like pumpkin and millimeter like mixed. Or that, I think that's, I think that's, that's what he said. And then we have some gravy, tomato gravy, and potato. Okay. So I guess it's halal friendly as well. And obviously tea and coffee. Okay. In the evening, the girls were treated to a surprise talk by guest speaker Sinagugu Zukulu. He is a renowned activist with a master's in environmental management. He has co-authored eight books, with the latest being The Charms and Medicinal Plants of the Pondo Land. So he spoke to us for quite a while doing a Q&A, but we're just going to give you a few snippets of what his talk was about. We will upload the full 35-minute video for you guys to have a look at. Here in the Pondo Land coastline, the reflooded zone, the continental shelf is very narrow and it's the narrowest in the entire world. Why? Because the coastline was raised up. So therefore, in this coastline is the only coastline in the entire world where you would find heritage sites or archaeological sites, sites that were occupied by people throughout during the last ice age. In other places, because the continental shelf is much longer 
all of those sites they are underwater in total here we've got indigenous plants we've got 2225 and of those 196 they are endemic to this region there are 36 biodiversity hotspots globally they represent just 2.4 percent of the land surface of the earth but they contain more than 50 percent of the plant species as endemics in South Africa, there are three biodiversity hotspots, areas of high endemism, where you find at least 1% of the global population of plants, and this is one of those. So it's a very unique and a very rich region, and it's a biodiversity hotspot, and it's a center of endemism. We call it PCE, Ponderland Center of Endemism. Mr. Zikulu kept the girls enthralled for over an hour with his knowledge. We'll pop the full video online so you can watch the whole thing. Now for the sunrise of day three. The sun is rising on this side. I'll show you in a minute. Morning, our second morning breakfast. Let me show you what we have. So we have some beans. We got some onions. We got some fried eggs. We got some steamed kosa bread and some porridge so as you can see everything is vegetarian and obviously peanut butter normal butter coffee tea and for fruits we have some apples and we also have a sunrise so this is day three our shortest hike for the day we're just hiking three kilometers to a viewpoint and to like a pool um out of most of the people only two of the animal girls are hiking with us the rest are a bit tired from yesterday hey <laughs> some local dog so yeah we're about to check it out starting our hike now so this is singong Weni waterfall uh, on day three of our hike so this waterfall you usually see if you kayak up the Tentu river mouth it's the, There's the ocean there So this is the first waterfall you see And if you go further down You'll see another awesome waterfall where you can hike to uh, You leave your kayak and you hike up So this one here we hike to the top of it um, But the second waterfall when you kayak You can't really uh, hike to it You have to go with a kayak So the reason we didn't include kayaking in this trip Because it's an additional day and the, the school was uh, short with time but if you want to kayak then I recommend doing this over four days so day one is like horse riding and hiking day two is cliff jumping day three is kayaking and then day four you, you head back home so this is the M10 to river mouth so beautiful so if you turn over here you'll see the waterfall I showed you now uh, you can view it with a kayak or you can hike there it's obviously better with the kayak and if you go further down on the left hand side there's swallowtail falls um, it's really, really beautiful as well so to go to swallowtail and back you're looking around nine kilometer in turn trip so you need like a, a whole day for that It's nice. Ooh. It's a paradise pool, just the most incredible swimming spot. And all these little plants are palmeed plants. I'll show you in the next video how they filter the water and make it safe for drinking. Nature is incredible. This is palm it and it actually filters the water, it's clean the water, it's got layers. So yeah, it's got layers. It's all the dirty stays. But that's the thing I thought was a bird the other day. <laughs> yeah, so when the water actually flows down, it actually gets into the filter and gets clean. All the dirty stays in. So there's lots of them. That's why the water is quite clean to eat, to drink and to cook for it and 
Yeah, we never get sick. Is this indigenous to the wild coast? This, or? this is indigenous, yes. Wow. This is indigenous. Not so cool. Endemic, not, not, not endemic, endemic just endemic. indigenous. It doesn't, yeah, it's not. We're just done with day three, with a short three kilometer loop hike. We're loading everyone up into our local transport. Done with day three. Just a little walk to the viewpoint. Paradise pools. We're done with them too. <laughs> Welcome to the Mzamba Suspension Bridge. Whoa, this thing is quite wobbly. It's so beautiful. This is obviously the Mzamba River Mouth, which lands into the ocean. And over here you can uh, have quick access to the Mzamba fossils. The bridge was actually sponsored by an Austrian NPO to help the locals get across the river, particularly in high tide which just cut down the commute time for them because obviously they walk to get to their destinations. Now back from our adventure with Danville Girls. So can you tell me guys, girls, what was the highlight of your trip? The waterfalls. The waterfalls? Yeah. Which one in particular? Uh, the first one. Yeah. The first one. Was that your favorite one? The one where you pin drop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you? Uh, you give that to me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so waterfall, waterfall as well. How about you? Uh, probably the talk with Sinegugu. Um, that was really, really informative and really special. So interesting, eh? The talk. How about the you? Riding. The horse riding. Oh, you were really good at that. The horse riding. The horse it was your first time, but you yes, did so it was, well. It was great. Wow, you did. Yeah, really so she, she horse rode. Uh, for the first time, 15 Ks with yeah, no one like so nice. holding the horse for her. That was great. How about you, ma'am? The views and the horse riding. Horse riding. And you, ma'am? Um, the talks and jumping off. The oh, the cliff jump. Your first time cliff jumping. Okay, thanks. You, you were out. Oh, yes, yes. Um, facing my fears and knowing that I overcame them. Yeah, we are really, 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 really proud of you. We're glad. We're glad. Oh, you want to ask any questions? I think, but I think yeah, we're super, super proud of you. Okay. Emma, what was your highlight of the trip? Um, I'd say definitely almost the same as Sami's. Uh, just being able to like go through with what I'm really like scared of, like horse riding and cliff jumping. It was so scary, but at, at the end of the day, I still did it. And I'm really proud of myself. Oh, we're proud of you too. And like when it comes to to learning, what did you learn on this trip? Since you know it's a school excursion. What you learned? I learned how to use um, natural plants as plasters, which was really cool. Oh, and I love learning about the plants and the biodiversity and the um, the geography of the whole coast. It was so amazing. Ah, oh, thanks. Likewise. How about you? What was your highlight and what did you learn on this trip? Um, I learned to push beyond my limits and. Uh, and just to really appreciate my surroundings. Okay, yeah, it's a really beautiful place. And you, what did you learn? Um, just uh, pushing through and perseverance and That's getting there. Yeah, same as her. Same. Willpower. Um, just like how privileged we are, because like we get to go to with a car to school, mm. and they have to walk so far every day. Cool. I'm glad. Being educated about how the people in the community love every day and the food they eat and all of that. I'm, I'm glad you you supported <laughs> the community yeah. by staying at their homestays. What did you um, learn? That I can overcome certain things <laughs> that I didn't think I'd be able to achieve. Oh, I'm so proud of you. How about you, ma'am? What, what did you, you learn on this trip? I love the waterfall uh, formations that he taught us. The um, the gentleman that spoke, the guest so speaker. Google, yes, yes, yes. Yes, so um, how he explained um, the, um, the waterfalls that were in line and also the community. I loved learning more about um, their surroundings and how they live and I love how proud they are of their land. Oh, thank you, and you must Ms. Newberry? I think I would agree with Ms. Cornier okay. in terms of learning about the land and how proud that the community is of their land and their heritage and being able to share that with us. It was very special. Oh, thanks. I'm so glad you guys gave the like the homestays a chance and you know, it's really, really awesome that everyone stayed over there because, yeah. Thanks. Thank you for watching the coolest adventure with us. I hope you learned something new. I hope you think about joining us, getting involved in this ecotourism that gives back to the community and really pushes individuals to live their best lives. <laughs> Is there anything that we can do as, um, as a school or people who don't live in this area to mm. contribute to its protection? I mean, this trip has been 
really great mm. so far and mm. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's not always yes. feasible to bring mm. a whole school trip out mm. here, but is there anything mm. yes. that we yeah. could do, um, you know, where we are to contribute? Yes, most definitely. There's a lot that you guys could, uh, could, could contribute. One of those is raising the awareness about the uniqueness of, of this thing. One, for instance, would be to flood uh, Kwete Mandashe's um, uh, email, email box, his Twitter account and all of that, and saying Kwete, stay away from the World Cup. Um, and uh, so, so there's a lot, so you can you can flood his uh, so, social, you can even flood the presidential one and say I've been on this, this place is so unique it's a, it's a heritage site, why do you want to manage, so stay away hands off, hands off the World Cup. So you can do a lot. We can also you can do little uh, film clips using your cell phones whilst you are here and show the beauty of this place and you could share those. You can also tell more people that there is a place here that people could come and learn and enjoy the beauty of this area. So you